Here we go, Kaylin Angloss back here, and today I wanna to talk about physiological adaptations to aerobic training specifically. So aerobic training, we're talking about long distance, endurance training, any type of training that lasts more than two minutes, that's considered aerobic. And when we're doing aerobic training, there's certain adaptations that happen that allow us to better perform in these different situations. So when we look at aerobic training and, and any really endurance training, it uses oxygen. That's what aerobic means, using oxygen to create energy. And one of the main fuel sources for this is fats. Fats really fuel long distance endurance aerobic training and it's done mostly through slow twitch type 1 muscle fibers so we have slow twitch and fast twitch aerobic training is mostly slow twitch muscle fibers and when we're trained so when we've been training aerobically or endurance training for a longer period of time compared to untrained there's certain things that happen physiologically in the body that allow you to train better and that's what I want to talk about so one of the things that's uh, maybe most important for people who are trained aerobically and what happens to help them improve is they have an increase in something called mitochondria, increased mitochondria. That's what happens from aerobically trained individuals. Now, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. You've heard that before. But what mitochondria actually does is it's the site where it takes oxygen and it takes our fuel, our carbohydrates and fats mostly, and it brings them into the mitochondria through a bunch of different processes or through a longer process, I should say. And that gives us energy, that gives us ATP. So mitochondria is actually the site where we create energy aerobically. When we're trained, you have more mitochondria. There's more of them and they're denser, they're bigger, there's more of them uh, within your cells to let you create that energy to keep you going to help you perform. That's an important one. Another one is what's called increased capillarization. Increased capillarization. That's a big word for basically saying capillaries are what sends the blood into the muscle, into the cell, and it allows, it sends all the oxygen and it gets rid of all the CO2, gets rid of all the byproducts, is the capillarization. And when you're trained, you'll actually have more capillaries in your muscles and in your cells to allow the oxygen to come in, to deliver the fuel to the mitochondria to help make that energy. So we have increased mitochondria, the site of energy production. We have increased capillarization, sending the, the fuel there. Now none of these processes can happen without enzymes. There's lots of different enzymes throughout your body, one of which that's important for aerobic training is when you're trained you have increased, you actually increase the number and the sensitivity of oxidative enzymes. These are the enzymes that are used, oxidative enzymes, that are used uh, when you're doing aerobic training. Oxidative enzymes are used when we're more trained, we have more of them, makes for a more efficient energy production. That's a big one. Another one is um, triglyceride stores. So fats get stored as triglycerides in your adipose tissue. When you're trained, you're gonna have more increased triglycerides. TG is triglycerides. That means that you're going to have more available fuel basically. If you have more triglycerides, that means you can break them down uh, more to create more energy, to send them to mitochondria, all that kind of stuff. So increasing your triglyceride content is also a really important one and especially the um, triglycerides with the oxidative enzymes as well. All of these factors allow for uh, greater efficiency of the type 1 muscle fibers to create energy and to carry out the movements for aerobic performance. So when we talk about adaptations to training and specifically aerobic training, increased mitochondria, the site of the um, uh, ATP production, capillarization, where it sends all the stuff into the mitochondria, into the cell, and more oxidative enzymes to allow these processes to happen, and more fuel sources, triglyceride stores. These are things that happen when you're aerobically trained, opposed to not trained, that allow you to perform better. Thanks guys for listening. Next time we're gonna look at uh, adaptations to anaerobic performance. Make sure to tune in. Thanks guys, I'm Kaylin Angloss. Let me know if you have any questions.